But I was really stirred as I walked in here this morning to rethink what the Lord had been saying to Ebenezer, particularly last week. And I, I, my, my mind went to Moses, especially in the juncture, and I wish we had the time, Bazalwani, for me to just share the burden about the need for us to have a nation that is baptized in God's peace and gripped by his redemptive agenda and purpose. But that will be for another day. Find a Bible conference for this. So that we can spend two weeks saying that nothing else but just eat, eat, and be. But because you know, when the water flows into a dam and it doesn't go anywhere, what does it do? It stinks. But there's something else that it does. It becomes a festive place for mosquitoes. And it starts diseases around. So please, Bazanda, when you hear the word, do it. And that's what Moses challenged me on his 80th year. Moses was 80 years old when the Bible tells us in Exodus that he became curious because he saw a bush that was burning and yet without getting destroyed. He saw something that was unusual. Now, many bushes had burned before in his life. But this one was particularly different because even though it was aflame, it did not get destroyed. So he became curious and said, what is it? Agape, how many years have you been here in Fundiswa Momsli? 12 years. And still going strong. Have you ever become curious to say, Lomli Lungulungulwa Kala 12 years ago, Onga Funuk Pela? What does it actually mean? And perhaps God will then call you to a holy place where you will hear Him speak to you about this flame that is beginning to fan among you. So Moses became curious. Now let me, let me, let, 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 let me, you know, I'm a, I'm a teacher by calling. So I, I want to teach a little bit. So Moses was in the middle of the backside of nowhere. And he had been led there by God to go and meet a man by the name of Jethro, the Midianite. Now, you may not know this, but when Abraham was 125 years old and his wife had died, he married another woman called Keturah. Keturah gave him six sons who were going to be in competition with the son of promise, which is Isaac. So Abraham realized that he better disperse these six sons. But before He dispersed them, he did, and fulfilled that which God had apprehended him for. Why did God choose Abraham out of a community of idolaters, a community of idol worshippers? That's where Abraham was when God called. Why did he choose him? The Bible tells us, and I know that you probably have read the promise of the covenant of Abraham many, many times. But the reason God chose Abraham is because he wanted to have a man in whom he would deposit himself such that he will teach other generations to come that the name of Yahweh will never be extinguished. And so now, as he was doing this, he came to one of the sons, and one of the sons' names was Media. Now, the Midianites are the Ethiopians, in case you don't know. They are Africans. So when God looked at Israel after 300 years and there was not even a priest or a prophet in Egypt among the people of God, Israel had begun to fall into the trap of life in a foreign land where they had even forgotten the name of God. And so where does God send Moses to go and recover for Israel who he is. He sends him to a Midianite. 
So unga bos pega pants ma Africa mshle. No ba eten swe ni is ni anuzgan kulunkulu were deposited la e Africa. One of the books Maurice is going to help me write is about spirituality in Africa. Was God in Africa before missionaries came? And if he did, how did he manifest himself? Does it mean good bonga bantu abazang batoli missionary? But it's hoko and bonk. I hope you understand soon. Does it mean that all the people who did not meet missionaries and told about Jesus Christ, are they in hell? It's a book we will write. But I can tell you, if you study the names of God in the African uh, nations, every name that the Africans use for, for God indicates an attribute of God. Whatever you say, you'll find that actually there is a richness of theology in the names of Africa. So God must have existed. Now the question is, how did he exist? Okay? That's another book. When I get a writer who can help me, I shall write. But, but Moses stands, and because he became curious, and there is nothing a wrong in the kingdom of God than Christians who are not curious about the things that God is doing among them. You are taking it for granted. Oh, no, it's Sunday. We're going to go to church. They're going to seem beautiful. We're going to hear the word of God. It's going to be great. And umagumnandi plumbing the turn of cars. Imagine if you were to hear God say or ask Moses what he asked him when he stood in curiosity before the burning bush. So God told Moses that, now listen, you need to go back to Egypt on his 80th year, so there's still hope for us. So God did three things because of curiosity. If you were to ask God, God, what is it that I'm seeing? God is going to ask you the question that he asked Moses. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? So please let God ask you that question. When I speak about my own life the best I can, as humbly as God would enable me to, maybe you ought to be asking yourself as he did, what do you have? If Caesar is this, what do I have in my hand? And you know, the funny thing, and I, this is not the, the thing I came here to do, but it's just an inspiration. Funny thing is that Moses had something that was usual that he uses every day. Yeah. He had a staff. God says, What do you have? And most of us have said, ah, I mean, I mean I'm no matrix. I just have matrix. Others of you, I've got a small business. I said, What do you have? Do you know what you have? Now, Fundi says, talk to you about gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you know it? Do you know what it is? What do you have? I have a wife. Well, is she a blessing? And how is she part of the mission? Husbands, you are told that husband, wives submit to your husbands. But your husbands must have a mission to which this submission is supposed to be about. Do you have children? Do you have a job? Do you have health? Do you have wealth? Do you have youth? Do you have age? Do you have wisdom? What do you have? So Moses was challenged. Oh, Lord, I, I just have a, a stick. Now the next thing that is interesting, God says, throw it down. And until you abandon what God has given you to him, until you do that, you will not see the miraculous where the ordinary becomes extraordinary and the natural becomes supernatural. You will not see it unless you bring it to the altar. Amen. God, this is what I have. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you abandon it, Moses, throw it down. Put it down. And some of us, God will not tell you the next step. He will not take you to the next level because you have not dedicated what he's given you to him. Moses, why do you have stick? 
throw it down. The Bible tells us that we must become living sacrifices, isn't it? The problem with the living sacrifice is that Makshi is altar and the sacrifice gets off because it's too hot. You see? So, but you have to be a living sacrifice. You don't know that text. Romans. It's in Romans. It's in the book of Romans. But then there's a third thing that God says to Moses. So Moses what do you have? A stick. Moses throws it down. Moses throws it down. And something happens to that stick that he never thought could happen. Ungulungulu can transform that five cents. You, well, I'm sure it's more than five cents. I say only five cents. I'm trying to South Africa. At least your fifty, your five rand, <laughs> or your fifty rand, or your fifty thousand rand, or your hundred thousand. God can take that thing and turn it into something supernatural. Amen. But then He says something else. He says, "Moses, pick it up." <laughs> now that's an idea that we need to use. What God has given us. You see, God does not expect you to give what you don't have. He cannot challenge you to give what you don't have. And by the way, one of the things I usually do, Ebenezer, I always tell Bazalon, you may not have a car to give this couple. You may not have a house to give this couple. You may not have a million bucks to give this couple. This couple. You may not. Well, maybe I don't want to talk for you because at least, at least I know I don't have it. But you know what is strange is that I've got a God who's got all the houses, who's got all the cars, who's got everything, he's got all the health, he's got all the wealth. And imagine if you were to release that blessing and pray for this couple. That the God who's got a cattle on a thousand hills should make them so wealthy they should not know what to do with the extra. You may not have children, but God can, can give them children. Anyway, that's another sermon for another day. But Bazalwan, Ninga Boating is close a good one. Ninga Boating is close to a good one. Ninga Be liberal. And I mean, I'm very, very generous with the gifts of God. You know, I can pray, Bazalwan, I can pray that this place must be worth 500 million. And God can do it. I can probably don't have the means. Who am I talking to here? All right. Let me do what I was asked to do. I see I've got very little time to do it. So, as I said, Bazalwan, Moses really challenged me that 80 years he was sent to an African to go and find out about Yahweh. Who are you? Now, Moses grew up. He should have known. But he still had to ask, who are you? He had spent 40 years with, 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 with Jethro. He should have known. I mean, Mangai Bible College for, for 40 years, Bazal. I mean, I should be able to recite. By the way, if you want to be challenged, Nena Bazalwan, you know the, the Muslims. Have you ever seen them reciting the Quran? Do you know how long it takes for them to become an imam? It takes 18 years. But after 18 years, they can recite that thing from Cover to cover. They will know it so well. Tinaba Zalwani says, Senzo Jangma pancakes, two minutes, two minutes. Besok Tambio Shumai. Besoya Puma and Soba Pisho. I said, Soba Maposto. Every corner. Manga says, So we took Tati Nigazi too. Every corner, Kono, Konicho Chom, my love. Who Pishop's Ban Ban. Umposto. Hey, I want you to have a 